In the last couple of weeks of the course, we'll briefly look at this broader topic we call thermodynamics, which is related to things like heat, temperature, and as you imagine, thermal energy. Before we get too much into it, while of course it is useful to describe the temperature of things and how that works, this particular topic highlights again how in physics, when we also are faced with complicated system, we have to make certain abstraction that limits the fineness of our model, which then we end up relying on kind of broader level, rougher quantity, but it's still useful in predicting the behavior system. What I mean by that is a current understanding of temperature on a microscopic level is that a particular object is made up of, let's just draw a few, you know there are many more, particles, either molecules or atoms, depending, and each of these little molecules is moving in a particular direction. Some are going faster, some are going slower, and some will end up hitting each other and change speed, or some will hit the boundary and hit something else, etc, etc. And they go at all kinds of different speed. And what temperature ends up being is that it's related to the average kinetic energy of all the particles that's inside. So when this one object is touching another object who maybe, let's say, is colder, so all these particles are moving quite slowly, that over time, when one of these red ones, say this one, moving quite fast, hits a slower one, it transfers some of the energy over to this other particle over here that has less kinetic energy. So as you have these collision, which actually can all be tracked and calculated using our conservation of energy and conservation of momentum treatment. But there are just so many of these collisions happening, either with molecules from another object or within the same object. There's so many of these collisions happening. It's not realistic to track what all the particles are doing in most cases. Sometimes you use computer models, but most often we don't really need to go down to that level. And in many cases, it's not even practical to initially measure the velocity of each of the millions and millions of particles inside a particular object. So as a result, thermodynamics, the approach that we end up taking with a system so complex is we end up falling back on bulk overall kind of properties that describe the system and see how those numbers interact with each other. So instead of talking about the individual kinetic energy of each particle and then averaging them, we just measure the temperature, which is the average. And as a result, you will find that in this chapter, one of the main characteristics of this kind of treatment is there will be a lot of what we call empirical data that we rely on, that we just go out and measure and we tabulate it. Very similar to things like density or your coefficient of friction. It's just that the system is so complex, it's not always useful to necessarily go down to the more fundamental level to work out all those details. We just encapsulate that as a number we look up and then we move on from there because it will still be useful in helping us predict the behavior of many systems. As it turns out, because your temperature is related to your average kinetic energy, as you add more energy to the system, in terms of heat, you can increase the temperature of that object. But based on the specific object, the different particles within it have different masses or they have they interact with each other in different ways. So for the same energy you put in, you might have a different amount of temperature gain. Then how we relate these two is using this formula, where Q here is the amount of heat that you transfer into or out of a specific object. So to make the distinction here between heat and thermal energy, heat is the amount of energy that gets transferred. It's a little more like work, whereas thermal energy is the amount of energy that is stored up within the system associated with 
temperature and it's a little more like your potential energy strictly speaking there's many many finer points here but just to make the first distinction that heat is the thing that moves from one body to another whereas a particular body has a certain amount of thermal energy so when you have energy from one body to another we call that heat and then it if you add heat you're going to get a certain amount of temperature change and if you remove heat you're going to get the temperature to drop and of course the more stuff you have quite intuitively the more energy it'll take to get the average kinetic energy up by a certain amount so it's related to mass and then all the rest of the stuff we're going to encapsulate in this thing called the specific heat which is the constant that relates these two sides it's basically saying for a given substance for one kilogram worth of stuff to raise it by one degree how much heat do I have to add in and this you just look up we have tables in the textbook that you look up and so we can explore that with this question with the various different substances that we'll be looking at but before we get to that we have to discuss this unit called the kcal in talking about heat and thermal energy oftentimes we use this older unit called the calorie which is often then expressed in kilocalories which incidentally on your nutritional labels or whatever they use calorie with a big c to denote kilocalorie i know it's confusing but it's kind of like historical baggages that we're carrying around in any case with energy we more often talk about in terms of joules and so the conversion factor here is it takes 4186 joules per one kilocalorie so in this sense we know that our q is 1k cal and so that gives us that we have 4,000 somewhat joules to work with. So if you look through your textbook, we'll go through these substances one by one. First, with water, you look up on the chart, as you might probably expect, the specific heat of water is given by 4186 joules per kilogram per degree C. So if you were to solve for the change in temperature, you would divide M and C over with one kilogram of water in this case, and the unit works out to give you degrees Celsius and specifically one degree Celsius. If that's a change in temperature, then your temperature final is your initial temperature plus the change. Initial was 20. So you made the water a little bit warmer to 21 degrees. The rest follows quite similarly, so I'll not take too much time here. For concrete, becomes 25 degrees C, so a little warmer. Even though you're putting in the same amount of energy, your temperature increase ends up being higher because the specific heat is smaller. Again, why that is specifically that water has one of the highest specific heat value out there, we're not gonna get into because it is quite complicated, but we do have this lookup table that we can use. Then for steel, even warmer, and then mercury, which has the lowest specific heat out of all these substances we're testing can go up to 50 degrees as a result. So given the level of abstraction, we've abstracted away a lot of the complication within this particular value so then the actual calculation isn't really so bad. And it makes our particular physics model usable in predicting the temperature change based on the amount of energy you input into a particular system.